In today's video, we're going to be talking about armamentarium for dental anesthesia. Some of the basic armamentarium for dental anesthesia includes needles, anesthetic cartridges, a syringe, and a locking hemostat. And so we're going to look at each of these different items and talk about the different components for each of these items. So I'm going to start with the locking hemostat. <clears throat> so we want to have a hemostat that will lock. Uh, so you can see this one locks at the bottom. Uh, it, so it will lock closed. And the reason uh, that that is significant is um, we use our hemostat in case of uh, potential needle breakage in the tissue uh, to retrieve the needle. So uh, we want the hemostat to lock tightly so that we can grab onto that uh, narrow diameter needle tip and pull it from the tissue. Uh, so uh, we want to have the hemostat open, however, and in a position that's readily available to grab in case of an emergency on our anesthetic tray uh, with the rest of our anesthetic items. So uh, we do use the hemostat for a few other things in anesthesia. We can use it to remove our needle or to help with needle recapping. Um, and we can also use the hemostat um, to help remove a rubber stopper uh, from uh, the harpoon, uh, sometimes the rubber stopper from the dental cartridges uh, will get stuck on the harpoon and so we can use our hemostat to safely remove that rubber stopper. Uh, we never want to use our fingers to remove a rubber stopper um, as that could be a potential for a stick um, and um, a risk for con uh, contracting uh, some type of illness blood-borne pathogens. <clears throat> so we're just going to make sure our hemostat is out and available, set off to the side on our tray. So I'm just going to push this off to the side, uh, but keep it open in the ready position while we talk about the other uh, pieces of armamentarium for dental anesthesia. Next, we have the syringe. And uh, for safety purposes, to maximize safety, uh, we always recommend using a, an aspirating syringe. So um, that we can aspirate. Aspiration um, is drawing uh, into the cartridge so that we can ensure that we are not in a blood vessel when we deposit the anesthetic at our target. Um, that uh, will help reduce the risk of toxicity uh, for our patients and again ensure uh, the most safe technique. Um, so there's several different pieces or components to the syringe. Um, here we have the thumb ring, this long metal piece right here um, that slides is called the piston. And then at the end of the piston, you can see uh, that sharp pointy item there that is called the harpoon. And that is the piece that penetrates through um, the rubber stopper end of our anesthetic cartridge um, so that we can dispense the anesthetic. And we'll go back to the cartridges in just a second. Um, so we have the harpoon. This piece right here uh, on the syringe is called the barrel. And you can see uh, we have two different windows on the barrel. So we have this large window, or what we call the large window. And then if I rotate the barrel around to the other side, you can see there's a small window. And then at the very, very top, we have our needle guide or the needle adapter where the needle attaches to the syringe. So we want to make sure our syringe is um, also in good condition before we uh, start uh, any type of anesthetic procedure. And um, some syringes will require uh, tightening, so they'll have threaded pieces. For example, some syringes, the thumb ring down here, uh, will become loose. 
Um, so you may want to check and make sure that's tight by um, screwing that piece. And other syringes, the needle adapter at the top here also can become loose or unthreaded. So, so if you have one of those types of syringes, you'll want to make sure that everything is tight. Uh, there's no rust anywhere on the syringe uh, or on the harpoon, uh, that the harpoon looks uh, sharp and that it's not bent. Um, and that all parts, again, look like they're functioning and are, are in good working order um, because you don't want to get into uh, the middle of giving an injection and have your equipment malfunction on you. That is never a fun thing for you or the patient. So, so that is our syringe. And now we're going to take a look at the dental cartridges or the anesthetic cartridges, excuse me. Um, and we have... Uh, several different types of anesthetic cartridges and uh, anesthetic solutions. And I'm just going to grab several of the different types I have available right here. But you can see that uh, based on the different cartridges, there is a color coding system here. So you can see uh, the color coded bands at the bottom of the cartridge, and that helps us indicate what type of anesthetic solution we're using, because each anesthetic solution will have a designated color coding band. So uh, I know from my experience that red indicates lidocaine, so this is um, a lidocaine solution. Uh, if you look on the uh, the labeling that's placed on the cartridge. Um, you can see where it indicates the type of solution there. Um, so like a span standard, just the, the brand name, and then lidocaine hydrochloride, 2% is the actual drug name, the anesthetic drug. If I scroll down, you can see in the tiny print there um, is our epinephrine, and I know it's hard to see that, but uh, there we go we have a 1 to 100,000 percent solution of epinephrine. So, um, so that is the drugs that are in our anesthetic cartridge. Um, then we have our manufacturing barcode. Um, and that's important because we want to make sure that is not in our large window um, when we are um, giving anesthetics so that we can see uh, through the most clearest part of the cartridge um, to properly determine our aspiration, whether it be positive or negative. <clears throat> so the, t the pieces are the components, I should say, of the cartridge include uh, the metal hub. So at the very, very top, you'll see this metal hub. Um, and then the middle of the metal hub, you'll see this tiny little circle here, and that contains a semi-permeable diaphragm. And so why that's important is um, because um, things can actually penetrate through the semi-permeable diaphragm and get into the cartridge and cause contamination of the cartridge and the anesthetic solution which can result in burning um, when we give an injection, could potentially result in um, some risk factors and side effects to the patient that are um, undesirable. So, uh, so we don't want to ever soak the anesthetic cartridges in any type of alcohol solution. We don't want to clean, put cleaning solution on the top. <clears throat> because potentially those contaminants can get through the diaphragm and, again, contaminate the inside of the cartridge and solution. Um, let's see. We This piece here is just the, called the glass tubing. Um, you can see the sticker, the manufacturing label goes over the top. Uh, we have our color code on the manufacturing label, and then this little piece at the end is our rubber stopper. <clears throat> And so uh, we can also see on the manufacturing label uh, the amount of anesthetic that's in the cartridge, 1.7 milliliters. This cartridge says it contains uh, 1.7 milliliters. Most cartridges contain anywhere between 1.7 and 1.8 milliliters. However, they just um, indicate the cartridge as 1.7 because there is some variability between cartridges. Um... And then we also have our expiration date indicated 
on the cartridge as well. So we always want to check the expiration date on the cartridge and make sure um, we are using a solution that has not expired. Um, some other things that you want to look for uh, on when you're looking and evaluating your cart fuels or your cartridges, I should say, um, prior to use is you want to make sure um, that the solution looks clear. Um, I can show you uh, an example of, this is an example of a cartridge that is very expired. Let's see, I think this one expired in May 2011. So you can see the um, extreme discoloration though of that anesthetic solution and how yellow that is. So we definitely want it to look <laughs> clear and not like that yellow um, color or any, any discoloration whatsoever. Um, there should also be uh, no large bubbles, so I don't see really any bubbles in this cartridge, but a large bubble would be, um, you know, uh, maybe close to the size of the rubber stopper. Um, no large bubbles, that could potentially indicate that the solution has been frozen. We don't want the rubber stopper to be extruded or coming out the bottom of the cartridge. So in, on this cartridge, you can see that the rubber stopper is actually intruded a little bit um, from the bottom, and that's how they should be. So it should never be sticking out the bottom because that could indicate uh, there's something wrong with the solution, it's contaminated, um, or, or any number of things. Um, and there should be no other pinholes in the uh, diaphragm. Um, so uh, that could occur if somebody tried to use the cartridge previously, um, but then did not end up using it. Um, those cartridges should just be um, just uh, be placed into sharps or otherwise as indicated by policy. And the metal hub should be clean and there should not be uh, any rust or any deposits on uh, the metal hub. <coughs> Um, I also have an example here of a solution that had a positive aspiration. So it, it looks a little similar to this other one that was expired. It's hard to tell the color differentiation, and uh, uh, you'll be able to hopefully see that better um, clinically when we get you in into practice. Um, the needles. I'm going to go to the needles. So the needles come in various lengths and gauges and um, they it's the way they look on the outside is going to vary per manufacturer so I have several different needles here um, to show um, you can see uh, they're all going to look a little bit different and so you want to make sure you know what you're grabbing because um, again ma different manufacturers um, are going to have different packaging for the needles and um, so looking at these two needles right here, you would think those two needles are exactly the same, but they're not. So if you look closer, one is a long needle and one is actually a short needle. So you want to make sure that you know what you're grabbing um, lengthwise. That's important for the injection technique that you're using. You don't want to use a long needle um, in an area where you're not going to uh, a great depth. Um, so um, just uh, make sure you're checking uh, what needle gauge and size you're using. Uh, we use mostly 25 gauge needles in our dental clinic. These are 27 gauge needles, I believe. But again, um, if the, uh, the needle uh, gauge is going to vary and uh, you want to make sure you know what you're grabbing because the packaging also is going to vary. Um, we'll take a look at the sizes of the needles. So here's um, here's an example of the needles unsheathed. Um, and on these, you can see there's a little red dot. Um, and the red dot is going to indicate uh, where the bevel of the needle is. And the bevel is the opening. Um, so there are different parts to the needle. Uh, we have um, this piece at 
that comes out the bottom here uh, is called the cartridge penetrating end. So this is the end that penetrates the um, semipermeable diaphragm on uh, the cartridge when we screw it in to the top of the needle adapter on the syringe. Then you have the hub. So this piece here is called the hub. The syringe adapter uh, is here. This is the hub at the end. And then again, the um, red dot is going to indicate where our bevel is. And the bevel is going to be the opening of the needle at the very, very tip. So kind of hard to see the bevel there. I know, but um, um, these are the different needle sizes. So you can see the difference between the short and the long needle. There's about a 10 millimeters in difference. Our short needles are going to be anywhere from 20 to 25 millimeters in length, and the long needle is going to be uh, between 30 to 35 milliliters and millimeters, excuse me, in length. All right, so now I'm going to go over assembly, how to assemble your syringe. So you want to retract the piston to the fullest extent. So you're going to pull all the way back on the thumb ring here and um, kind of hold it in a backwards position. And then you're going to insert your cartridge. So you want to insert the cartridge with the rubber stopper side pointed towards, excuse me, the rubber stopper side pointed towards the harpoon, just like that. So you're going to drop it in with the rubber stopper side pointing towards the harpoon. And then to engage the harpoon, you want to push firmly and twist. Push in firmly and twist. And you can see how I'm kind of holding the cartridge here with my thumb stable to prevent it from rotating and moving inside the syringe. Um, so once I get the harpoon really engaged, I can pull back on the thumb ring to test it. And you can see that it looks fully engaged because there's not a lot of space between the harpoon and the rubber stopper. Um, it looks pretty tight. Now we're going to attach the needle. So you want to make sure that you insert your cartridge first and engage your harpoon before you attach the needle. Um, if you try to engage your harpoon after you attach your needle, you're going to end up dispelling a lot of anesthetic unnecessarily. Um, so um, it's better to attach your needle after you've engaged your harpoon. So to attach the needle, I'm just going to, actually let's try a different one that's a little bit easier here, twist the needle to take off the cap that covers the diaphragm penetrating end. So this is the diaphragm penetrating end, and I'm just going to try and align the needle and put that straight through, and then while holding steady, Thread it down till it is all the way tightened. Um, now I know I talked about the needles that indicate where the bubble is. Um, if you are um, concerned about uh, bubble towards bone, that might be, um, you know, something that you focus on. So it really depends on the practitioner and their technique. Okay, so now we have our needle on. Um, it's not seating really, really tightly here, uh, but uh, so our needle is now on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate, or once I get my needle on, actually, I'm going to, using a one-handed technique, uncap, and I'm just going to dispel a couple drops of the anesthetic just to make sure that nothing is impeding my flow but um, literally just a couple of drops and that's it. Uh, when I go to recap, I always want to use a scoop technique, just using a one hand. So I want to insert the needle, and then once the needle is fully inside the cap, I can bring my other hand and secure it on, or I could pick up my hemostat if I wanted to use my hemostat 
and bring that in to help secure my needle. Uh, either would be acceptable. Um, I can also give you an example. Okay, I'm going to uncap again using a one-handed technique. So I'm just going to loosen my cap with one hand and then I'll pick up my syringe here just like so. And now I am going to demonstrate an aspiration. So um, this is just some disclosing solution in a cup. Um, just to kind of help demonstrate what a positive aspiration or what aspiration looks like. It's a very slight negative pressure on the thumb ring. Literally, you can see the amount of bubbles coming in um, from just that slight pressure. So it really doesn't take much negative pressure. And you want to try not to draw that much air into the cartridge if possible. Um, so you can see uh, just a little negative pressure there. And um, I'm not sure if you can see, there we go, um, the uh, disclosing solution that had came into the cartridge, um, but um, we're able to get some disclosing solution to come into the cartridge. And that's kind of what it looks like when you get a positive aspiration. You'll start to see some of that blood um, collect towards the top of the um, syringe. Uh, and then um, it'll, if there's a lot of blood, it will uh, fill the cartridge. Um, so recap again using a one-handed technique, one-handed scoop technique, and then secure once it's in place. To disassemble, you're going to unscrew the needle. And if you had to change your, uh, if you got a positive aspiration and had to change your armamentarium um, in the middle of treatment, um, this is how you would disassemble your syringe as well. So you want to um, remove the needle. This would get disposed of in sharps. And then you're going to pull all the way back on the thumb ring. All the way back on the thumb ring. And then you want to jump the cartridge into your hand and then dispose of the cartridge in sharps.